Hello there. Welcome to Light Embassy, taking this glory to the ends of the world. Today's devotional is captioned, Don't shrink from declaring. Don't shrink from declaring. And our team scripture is taken from the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Please, I'm reading from the KJV. Paul says, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. This statement is very is full of insight and information. It says, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. If any man shrinks from declaring, if any man is unwilling to utter from fear, if any man is unwilling to exude fearless confidence and freedom of speech, as pertains to the gospel, God says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. God has no pleasure in people who are doubters, people who are not working in faith. No wonder, again, see, he again says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you see, it's the same thing he's emphasizing. God says, hey, if you're not without faith, why? Because the just shall live by faith. When you come out of faith, you are out of the order of righteousness. You see that? That's why I say the just, the righteous shall live by faith. It means if you come out of, the, of faith, you are out of orderliness. You are out of righteousness. Faith is what put, Christians should understand the importance of faith. Faith comes by the word of God. Therefore, faith is what positions you in the way of righteousness. The one the Lord Jesus will say, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. That's the importance of faith. When you're out of faith, you're not in the right order of things. You know, sometimes in this world, when we talk about faith, there are people who think that it's, we, we are so spiritual to be emphasizing faith, 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 faith. <laughs> but they don't understand that. No man sees faith. Faith is not something which is so above and beyond. No man sees what faith is. The abnormal is what we see in this world. So when you are really exhibiting faith, walking faith, you are doing the no living the normal life that you are supposed to live. You see that? So faith is very important. So he says, the just shall live by faith. He says, hey, if that man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The test of faith, my brother, my sister, is a test of your confession. What are you going to confess when all hell break loose on you? The word of fear. Are you going to confess the word of fear? When the Bible says that the man drew back, it means he shrank from declaring. He was unwilling to declare the word in the midst of daunting and formidable oppositions and the storms of life. He was unwilling to declare from fear. The Christian ought to say what God said about him, irrespective of the storms, no matter how boisterous they are. And men are programmed to say what they really believe in their heart. So if you really believed what God said, nothing can change the confession of his word. That is true. That's how man is programmed. You see, unless you are pretending, you are always going to say what you believe. You are always going to say what you believe. So when in the midst of oppositions, you find yourself saying something different, this is proof positive. It becomes the barometer that, hey, you, were, you didn't believe that which you thought you believed. You know, sometimes 
Christians have what we call mental assent or mental consent or mental agreement and not faith. There's a difference between mental agreement and not faith. So and faith. You can have a mental agreement of God's word, and sometimes you may misconstrue it to being faith. There's a difference. For instance, sometimes somebody, for instance, may mentally agree with the word of God. And almost all Christians mentally agree with the word of God. As far as they find out that what you are saying is from God's word, if the person is a reasonable Christian, he's going to say, yes, he agrees. Because he has seen that it's in the word of God. That does not mean you have faith. You see, faith is when oppositions come to test that word. You are going to hold on to the confession or what is how you are going to respond will be in line with that word. So what you say you believe changes the condition of your heart and your response to life, irrespective of contrary oppositions you have not believed. So it's contrary oppositions really that comes to test faith. If really you believed in something, you see why God will allow and permit adversities. Because without adversities, how are you? you are not going to know you didn't have faith. Sometimes people don't understand the ways of God. See, God is so loving. So sometimes people, people ask, why is it that God, you allow me to go through these adversities? Sometimes God has to permit Christians to go through adversities for them to realize that they didn't even have faith in that which they thought they had. You see that? Because there, there's no way that person was going to know he had faith in that which he didn't have faith in, what, in that which he thought he had. Because with that oppositions of life, you may have mental agreement thinking you believe when really you don't believe. But it's when opposition comes and still you hold on. Now let me give you a simple example. Now any child who believes that he is the son or daughter of a certain woman and is fully sure and has seen the, the various tests and the various evidences to prove that this man or woman is my, is my biological mother or father. No matter what contrary evidence, no, no matter whatever someone says, he is not going to give up on the truth that I know that this father, this ma woman, this this man is my is my father, is my mother. You see that. If even the grandmother comes and says, "No, no, 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 no," he's not your father. But no, he has she has seen or he has seen the paternity test. No, he says he's my father. So he has the evidence. So when you have really the evidence, nothing, nothing will change your position. Nothing will change your position. You have the evidence. Nothing will change your position. You have the evidence. It's like someone saw somebody stealing. Since he saw it with the naked eye, you are not going to change. You see, no lie. In the court of law is going to change his or her position. I know I saw you, you used to that thing because he has the evidence. Now the Bible tells you and I that faith is an evidence. You see that? So from God's perspective, since faith is an evidence, because faith is real, it's true, it's the evidence, it's reality, it's true, it's the truth. So he doesn't expect you that if you have believed, you have seen the evidence. Any oppositions in life should change your belief. And that is why sometimes when he sees in our heart that really we have not believed what we think we are believing, he has to allow certain oppositions to come so that you will know that, hey, I have to work on my faith. That's another one reason that God may permit oppositions to come. Another reason also is it helps you to exercise your faith so that you build your faith strong. You see that? So sometimes we, are, we may not understand certain things from God's perspective. But God knows that all these things are important for our soul development. Glory be to God. You are, you see, the Jews 
who were in the wilderness, that church in the wilderness, did not believe when God said, you will possess Canaan. So, when they faced the oppositions of the giants, they brought forth an evil report. And what is an evil report? An evil report is whatever you say which is contrary to what God said in that situation. How many times have you brought forth an evil report? Faith speaks. He speaks only the word of God, no matter the circumstances, because faith has come to believe that God can never lie. Faith exudes fearless confidence. There is no circumlocution in his speech. He is bold as a lion. Today, no matter the troubles you may be in, know that you overcame them before they came. That's what the Christian faith is about. This is the meaning of the Christian faith. For the Christian faith, you overcame before the troubles came. God bless you.